Robert Hyrulek. This is Karen from Science to Sage, and we'd like to, we're at a conference where we're talking about new energy and new ideas, and also consciousness. So it very much reveals the burgeoning of both consciousness and science. He's bringing together the knowledge of water, resonance, crystals into the awareness of um, a greater science understanding. So with that, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? I've gotten interested in an area that I haven't worked on. And the interest has to do with an area in science that I felt has been deficient, where science has been deficient. Science assumes that everything is mechanical. It's either mechanical deterministically or it's mechanical probabilistically. If that were really true, then the experience that each person has of their consciousness and their free will, that experience is inconsistent with this point of view that science has. So I thought, what happens if we change the way we think? What happens if we say everything has consciousness? If you want to be spiritual, everything has its own soul. Consciousness of, of a crystal is different than a consciousness of a person but it's a consciousness nevertheless. Furthermore, anything that has consciousness, in its mode of consciousness, it has to have free will. Free will is something that is not, completely not within the science paradigm. So I'm thinking about this. And then you have all the stories of different people who are working with energy, um, uh, producing uh, more energy than they put in, which is not possible under the current mode of, of science. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Why the variation? And the variation, my hypothesis is, is that something has changed with the conscious in the conscious intention or the consciousness of the people who are ob even observing the experiment. In other words, somebody who has a skeptical belief can ruin the effect. So how do we do science if you begin to have, how do you do science if we have this idea that everything can have consciousness? How do you control for that consciousness? And so, a person has to have a clear mind. And we have to have... We have to be able to project intention. But you don't project intention by trying too hard. In, in some literature, trying too hard is like lusting for the result. And if you lust for the result, you block yourself. Can I ask a question based on what your what your your hypothesis is, which makes sense to me. If I understand, you're you're, you're familiar with Dr. Pollock's work. You're coming from Washington State, University of Washington. Washington. Thank you, thank you. And and when I familiar with Dr. Pollock's work, Dr. Pollock said to me, everything is made of particles, light, and water which means we're all, everything is made of the same thing, which means in it is inherent some sort of intelligent 
form of information that we're exchanging, which you relate to the idea of geometry. So it's information in forms, which is information in form. So you're talking about crystals, you're talking about how we even speak with related to cymatics actually shows the geometry of how we, within the ether, and within water being 99 point, we're 99% water, we're arranging and rearranging the molecules, not within ourselves, but within ourselves in every other place. So I think you could speak to that. It's not unusual to hear some people thinking that space has structure. Mm -hmm. And the structure of space is the geometry. And the geometry is not the same all over in space. That the geometry changes. It's the same thing with water. Now, I don't have any hard evidence for this, so it's, in, it's intuition. That when water gets structured, and there are many ways that water can get structured, the coherent domains that get uh, created at the nanoscale are geometric structures of water. And those geometric structures can have things like pentagons, triangulated pentagons, forming a surface, sometimes mixed with hexagons. And you can have a surface that has dominant hexagons and a minority of the pentagons. Um, you can have other things happen which are more like what what which are more like four dimensional cubes projected into 3D or even five dimensional cubes projected into 3D and so my my wife has been um, creating um, copper models of all kinds of different geometries. And it's no coincidence that she got interested in doing this uh, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, right at the same time that I was beginning to formulate that this needed to be looked into. The, the quartz crystals. Uh, if you listen to Mar Marcel Vogel in the lectures that he did at workshops in the 1980s, he talks about how to program crystals and how to have those crystals influence the environment. If this is true, then quartz crystals can be used as an aid for what we like to create with our conscious intention. So let's go back to the idea of there's three things that make everything. And based on that, we're carbon-based beings, which are crystallized into form. So you in your presentation today talked about the properties of water, you talked about Emoto, and you also talked about um, other studies that had been done to replicate things repeatedly. Also know from other people that I've interviewed, if there's four glasses of water and each one of us holds a glass of water differently, there's a different signature in the water. Yes. So water is resonant and is a medium which transfers information. So based on that, it crystallizes into form, and therefore, as we use it in watches, is a conductor of information. 
holder of information. A holder of information. So and, a, and it can be as a transmitter of information right. and as a receiver of information. So are we not crystalline structures? I think in the, in the, from the correct point of view, which I don't know how to get there, everything is a crystalline structure. And I think some of these structures, we think in space, talking about physical things in space, so we think three-dimensionally. But the crystalline structure is more than three dimensions. Mm. And the crystals are setting up fields and the geometric shapes are setting up the fields. As there's a whole field called biogeometry, which is, is, is in the essence all about this. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have a physics that acknowledges that a shape puts out a field. Wouldn't that be called chemistry? But not acknowledged. We don't have, we don't have a chemistry that says a shape has an associated field. You know, that in itself to me is fascinating because we're talking about the whole frequency field which relates to chemistry, which relates to light, which relates to color. And it sounds like people have not integrated <coughs> the different disciplines. So there's, uh, if you look at this from a mathematics point of view, you have the world of the real numbers. Mm -hmm. And if you go back so many, so many hundreds of years, there were no more numbers than the real numbers. And then comes the completion of the real numbers with imaginary numbers. Can you, can you define that? An imaginary number is the square, is based on the square root of minus one. There is no number whose square is minus one. Yet, electrical engineers use the imaginary number system, the complex numbers, in all things relating to measurement of impedance, even in describing um, sinusoidal waves. Mm. It can be done in a complex way and it's sometimes very simple that way. What I'm trying to drive at, that we are restricting our way of looking at things and that there is at what I'm saying as an imaginary component that we haven't gotten to. That imaginary component, I have a suspicion has something to do with what we've called subtle energy. Mm. And subtle energy is an energy, a type of energy, that's not covered by current physics and does have to do with consciousness and does have to do with, with life itself. That's brilliant because it seems to be pervasive um, in this one day of presentations. Everybody's getting back to the notion of subtle energy, ether, <coughs> And a, and a field of consciousness um, that is pervasive and something that at the turn of the century was very prevalent but for somehow with the Einstein theory it seemed to have gone out the window is that what I'm understanding yes I think so okay I think so yeah well thank you thank you for your time thank you for your interview and um, thank you for your blessing that you will be to the world and have been thank you <laughs>